we're going to prepare you for the lectures and tapes that we're going to do on a regular basis of using herbs in the world we live in. We don't, before we do that, we don't want you to fall asleep and think by learning what we're going to be saying on these tapes and during these lectures that everything all is well if you do this all is not well whether you do it or not but there's an opportunity to live better we're now going to uh, prepare ourselves for the tapes that follow on specific herbs specific water specific actions uh, we're not going to present the herbs as a medication we're going to present the herbs as what they are, part of a family. And that part of that family is your body, my body, and all living things. We're just simply going to work it into the fabric of your everyday life without it being an isolated uh, action or activity. One of the things that I would like to say is uh, each host has a balance. Uh, observe the um, dog, for instance, that go out and get a chicken that's been thrown away and it's evidently very badly decayed and smelling. The dog takes this animal, eat it, and show no ill effects. Uh, the bacteria in the stomach of this dog and the intestines of this dog um, have no problems with being able to take care of this bacteria. Suppose there is no dogs, there are no dogs, for uh, this to be done. Not that he's being you're solely being used for that, but that his bacteria is solely being used for that. Um, what happens to that bacteria? What happened to the bacteria it's kept in check? Um, the point is, we don't know enough about the uh, forces and the laws that hold the family together to make snap decisions. The, the um, bacteria that's in the dog is also or has an origin outside of the dog. All bacteria has to survive and it fights for that survival. And you say, okay, I'm going to um, isolate this particular thing and try this particular thing on the bacteria of this person. And you get rid of that bacteria, okay? You don't, you're not successful, you've failed. You've created a vacuum that's gonna be filled by a mutant or another form because nothing it can really, in the, on that plane, be destroyed no more than insects can. For instance, case at point. For years, people were treated for polio. Polio is gone. We have eliminated it in our lifetime. Now these people are coming back with diseases that you can't treat, who resemble polio in a lot of ways, have the same characteristics, but you didn't get rid of polio. You just put it in a form, force it to go into another form to protect itself. That's all we were capable of doing. We're not even capable of doing that. Because the bacteria is in harmony with the bacteria that is in harmony. That uses our bodies, just as with that dog, with that chicken. So what we have to do is go back to the plants again and say, all right, this is not a plant that is good for headaches, okay? We have to say there is a plant that can be used for a headache, but the plant itself can also be used for a lot of other things. Then we're talking, we're saying a little something that we can be permitted to get away with. A lot of people ask me, what is good for whatever? Okay, thinking 
that the plant acts like a man. A man goes there and takes one item extracted from the plant, good for a specific symptom that's going on inside the body. But the plant sustains a whole compound of things, a lot of different things that would work on the cause as well as the symptom. There are, there are very few proven drugs that could have divorced themselves. I can't think of any that has divorced themselves from the natural forces that can work on everything. That you know, as a you know, in a family situation in the body, uh, penicillin, as great as it is, has its drawbacks because it only specifically deals with specific little things, and it doesn't. It isn't harmonious to the body, so it doesn't come out. You see, if it was harmonious, it would be excreted. So it does, has nothing in it to cause it to be excreted. You see, it has something in it so it can be used against this bacteria, but it has nothing in it to make it be excreted. Whereas in the plant form, it would have something in it so the body could excrete it and feed it back into the chain and the and the biological law that it has to follow. When we take it out of context, it cannot follow the biological laws and the natural forces and laws. You see what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing medicine because it too has a place in today's society. But it doesn't take the place of the natural forces. It has to work in conjunction with the natural forces. We are no more capable of escaping the, the laws that, and I've referred to these laws several times in the, without identifying these laws, but the basic thing I want to say is that uh, there is a law that dictates healing, and that law uh, says that I will heal when I'm in harmony. Whether you're putting the cast on a leg or medication in the mouth or an herb in the mouth. Only when you're in harmony will you heal. And when there is a, when there is a disease that will not heal, it's because you're not in harmony. You're out of harmony. And you're not just out of harmony with your with your body, you're out of harmony with the entire universe because the body um, is, is no different than the universe because nothing on earth is that different from these laws, that is, from the laws point of view. Well, we may look at things differently. They may appear to be different because uh, we have a tendency to use our eyes and our so-called senses whatever that it means, to uh, justify being able to single out or identify something. But by and large, um, we're restricted to the involvement and the involvement and the, and the harmony of all movement and all life, whether it's below or above our standard. Uh, we stand in a position in this thing, in this order, yeah, along the obe obedience to this law, we stand in a position. And that position is not at the center, or at the top, or at the bottom, or at the beginning, or wherever. Our position is here as a man, simply as that, or as a woman. But it's not in the position of the animals, not in the position of the fish. They are superior to us in their position. They are inferior to us in our position. And that is the only truth. But in the actuality, uh, we are making a total mis uh, mistake by believing that we are superior to all 
living things in their position. None of us can perform the works of a cell. None of us. To make a bone heal in the leg or, you know, to get well or feel better or anything. None of us can perform that. We have to assume that these things will do it for us. Um, none of us can perform the balance and the care that, uh, say, the elephant does in order to maintain the balance and the control of the bacteria that it uses on this earth. You eradicate the elephant or move it from its natural position, then who's going to take care of that bacteria that it was taking care of? Who's going to do that? Are we going to start eating like elephants? Are we going to start trying to make our systems function to take care of the bacteria that elephants, when they become extinct, their bacteria is not going to become extinct because that's part of the law that these bacteria survive just like insects. They're going to survive. They're going to find a way to survive it. But they're not going to find a way to check, check themselves, keep themselves checked and balanced. They're not going to do that. Nothing ever does that. This is what we have now. We have... Too many people sitting still instead of moving, uh, so we're getting overpopulation. We have too many people trying to play uh, lifesavers instead of uh, pointing back to the natural forces and stop trying to dis uh, debunk these things and say that they're unimportant or backwards or uh, outmoded and say, okay, we're not doing such a good job here. We're, we're we're causing ourselves a lot of problems. There's only so much space, so many people, and these laws are not harmonious with that space of these people. By doing this, we're in a race, and the uh, uh, finish line has a pit of fire. We're going to destroy ourselves by winning or losing the race. If we finish the race, we're going to destroy ourselves. Um, there again, ourselves. And we're not too late to go back to natural forces. Uh, we're not too late to go back to the herbs. We're not too late. Um, there aren't that many people on earth that we can't use the natural forces again. It's just that we are too bent on glorifying ourselves as being a central, all-caring meaning for what goes on in the, on the forces and faces of this earth. Um, we base that on the laws that we perceive as religious and political. And of all the things that we fail in, it's our religious teachings that cause us to think like that without having built into the religious te teachings the, that basic respect for the rights of all creation. There's no religion in, that teaches in the West other than the natural one, which is the Indians, carried by the Indians. The respect of the animals, the respect of the land, the water, and the air. So when a person pollutes, disrespects the rights of the animals, the fish, and, and all of the things, it's because his religion has not provided him with a knowledge of the importance and the need for him being in the position he's in. Uh, he takes on an imaginary role of being wealthy or an imaginary role of being right. Uh, he can imagine himself right because he does not have to compare himself to anything other than another man. Every level of our existence, our meaning the family that we have, the family includes even the mosquito. As the big a nuisance as we think he is, he himself is part of an intricate part of the family. Because um, when the mosquito bite you, your blood is too thick. It creates a problem by him solving his problem by injecting usually swamp water or stagnant water into your blood vessels. 
he triggers I mean, to your system be triggers the white blood corpuscles in the defense mechanism of the body. So he actually does some good for mankind. But at the same time, he has other levels that he does a lot of good, which doesn't concern mankind. None of the levels concern mankind in the in the area that he should be interfering with or even trying to spend a lot of time understanding. But he should take time to respect what he does understand, what he does see. Um, the uh, If the uh, respect for the first five days according to the Bible's teachings of the creation, what it's all about, if that was a respect for those first five days, uh, then the sixth day wouldn't be so hard for man to go by. Um, I'm not attacking the church. I'm simply saying I'm attacking what was left out the first five days. And those five days have included in them those things that cause peace. There is no better uh, way to find peace than going back from the beginning. And herbs are part of the beginning. And the fam being part and partaking in order not to take the herbs out of context, leaving them in context with the rest of the things that are here, um, they must be mentioned so that the respect is there, uh, even if we don't have the understanding. It is not necessary to understand, but it is res necessary to respect the rights of these uh, other levels and other positions to exist. To remove ourselves from our position and invade the other position of these others causes an imbalance, not only in our minds, but our bodies. And therefore, we ourselves are creating problems. Um, some of the very serious uh, ailments that we're attempting to treat uh, through our uh, crash methods or basically uh, bacteria that has been left to uh, invade our bodies and our foods, especially our foods, uh, because there was no animal left to take care of these bacteria. Um, they had no host to keep them in balance uh, and keep them in check, so we have not only a overpopulation of man, we have overpopulation of some very good bacteria that has gone bad. To further emphasize, um, I need to start back to those things that we consider ourselves a divorce from, such as the natural forces that uh, are the natural powers that exist uh, let's go back to the plants because this is basically where we uh, would like to start. We often think of a plant as being able to manufacture its own food. We ourselves do the same thing. We produce with our bodies certain changes in, from what we take in and what we release or what goes away from us. Nothing stops inside or with our bodies. We use it uh, in the form of, uh, of uh, meat. Uh, it turned to uh, different fatty acids, and therefore we are manufacturing food from our bodies, from what we get from the, the uh, food chain ahead of us. But our total existence on this planet is not our relationship to the food chain. Uh, that's only one aspect of our existence. But we do, in order to stay healthy, uh, have to realize that just as a plant manufactures food for the next position in the chain or in the life cycle or in the position of the on the earth, we do the same thing. There are bacteria in the earth, in the soil, that are waiting for our uh, demise, or uh, the waste from our bodies, our feces, our urine, whatever. But they're 
are no bacteria in the water that's waiting on these same things. Uh, the using the water for the uh, elimination of our bodies or the uh, cleansing of our tools uh, in order to so-called progress with technology. Technology is a dirty word when it comes to the natural world. Technology is, has often lied about its uh, compatibility with the natural world. Uh, in reality, what it has done is uh, offered uh, less than a compromise. This has altered not only our cell structure, but the way that our cells are capable of going about performing their duties in their position to pass food, manufacture food, from what we give the, to, to pass on to the next stage. So we ourselves are no different from the plants. Matter of fact, we and the plants are so closely related we and everything else on this earth are so closely related. And each host, a different set of bacteria. And what we call sickness is a spiritual, physiological, and position malfunction. As soon as these things are pushed out of order, the response is immediate. The knowledge that the, uh, this is going on may not be immediate but the response to the tissue and the cells in the body is immediate. So we are, uh, the point I want to make, the, we make a food for the next step in the chain, just as the uh, uh, plant does, because in nature, nothing is wasted. Everything is passed on. We are the producers with our technology, with the theory that there is waste. And therefore, we go into uh, our practices trying to accommodate waste. Our practices in living has to be along the lines that there is no waste. If this is captured and used in harmony with nature, there will be less raping of the earth a lot less because most of the uh, raping is not based on the service to to the earth man but to wealth it is a placement of what we consider as wealth it has nothing to do with betterment of man or man living better man lives worse uh, man is capable of being lazier than he's ever been in, in the history of time but yeah, that laziness is is very, very expensive. Uh, and uh, this is what we're paying for. Um, but back to the earth. We need to not divorce ourselves from all the functions, all the teachings that the earth has to offer, uh, uh, whether it be in the form of the position that we are in and assuming that we are the center. We are not the center. We are the position we hold. We are not the center of any other position. Furthermore, once we introduce what we consider waste into the system, into this magnificent, well-programmed system, then the next position has to deal with what we produced, whether it's waste or, or a product. Yet it's introduced into a world that is geared to use what is passed on to it. And what you was passed on to it is done irresponsibly, uh, out of order. Then the next move is held up. The production is not there. Uh, you cannot, uh, by uh, time, you can't buy anything once it's introduced into the next step. It has to be passed on to the next step. So all the way down the line, all 
individual positions pay for malfunction. Therefore, we must understand with the type of technology that is based on the individual uh, greed, um, there can never be uh, any justification for this on this planet. This planet is not uh, conducive to uh, accepting or using uh, waste. It is only able to accept and use a responsible product. So each position has to pass on a viable, useful, understanding uh, uh, product. We cannot get away any longer by teaching that the feces from our bodies is waste and it must be treated as waste. It is not a waste. It is a, it is a product for the next position and the next position must be appreciated and, 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 and introduced to its useful and rightful position. To treat it as waste, that we must hide, wash away to some uh, glorious land, some place along the bottom of our drinking water, is asinine. It's not necessary that we continue to do this. Uh, furthermore, uh, if we say time will correct our waste policies, time will not correct our waste policies. Whenever waste is introduced, whether it's in the tundra or in the desert, that waste is present in the universe. It must be dealt with through the systems that exist. We do cannot introduce systems along the way that's going to accommodate our uh, waste policies. Therefore, hiding it in the earth, in, the, in our landfills, or pumping it into the air, uh, so we don't have to look at it. Uh, we're not introducing it into the system correctly. We're not being responsible. We're not being the caretakers of our own earth. We're not being the caretakers of our own bodies or our children. And uh, without um, this, we have no chance of surviving ourselves. We cannot expect the herbs or medication of any kind to step in and do what a bad kidney should be doing uh, without understanding that the reason this kidney is bad is because someplace along the line someone got rid of some waste into a system that does not accept getting rid of waste. We have no system on earth to get rid of waste. And that's the first law we're going to have to recognize. The second law we have to recognize is that no matter whether we face it or not, we have to pay and pay and pay by the way we live and, and the way we uh, uh, are going to reproduce and the way all living things are going to reproduce and the way all things are going to live as long as we continue to take this system which is a biological system which is based on accepting a product that is viable to the next position and using that product that is to make another product that's viable to the next position and we introduce something into this system that is not going to work never has worked and expect the system to handle it. No. Once in a while still happens, the chain is no longer in existence. We have waste on a planet that cannot accept waste.